today, the city of Sheboygan, the Oral Candidates. With us is the incumbent mayor, Mike Vanderstein, Alderman John Dollinger, Alderman Bill Deal, and Alderman Scott Lewandowski. We ask you chamber members to submit your questions for our candidates. At your tables, you'll find profile sheets for each of the candidates with a little bit of their history and background, and also answers to some of the general questions that you pose. For this discussion today, we're going to use questions that reflect some of the major topics that we selected. Before each question, I'm going to draw the name of one candidate at random. Selected candidate will respond, and then we'll proceed with responses from the other candidates in the order in which you see. Each candidate will have a maximum of two minutes to answer each question, and at one o'clock, we're going to stop for some audience questions. The candidates also have graciously agreed to remain so with that, we'll start with Mayor Mike Anderson. Question one. Sheboygan's roads are in terrible shape. This is a problem for existing and potential new businesses. What is your plan to get them back in shape? And what sources of funding are most viable to this? Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, first of all, uh, it's been an honor to serve as your mayor for the last four years. At City Hall, I've really tried to bring back the respectability of the mayor's office that's uh, been missing for a few years. Uh, we have a great team at City Hall, and I think we're all working collaboratively to solve problems like this. Now, when we talk about our streets, uh, you hopefully read the Sheboygan Press and uh, saw the article on, on, on my Sheboygan about the uh, work that David Beeble and his staff is doing Public Works. Uh, we have been spending a lot less in the last 10 years than we should be to keeping our streets up. So we're inheriting a problem that's existed for a while. And uh, right now we have a great program that's in place. Uh, we've developed new revenues with the wheel fee, the money that the county's giving us from the sales tax, and our council's owed it to a bond for $5 million this year, up from $3 million for the past 19 years to put more money into our streets budget. And uh, as you can see in the graph that was in the paper, the, uh, the city's going to be able to go from what was an average of 2.3 miles uh, per year on an average for the last 10 years up to 5.5 miles of streets will be improved either by you know, resurfacing or reconstruction this next year. We hope to continue this trend because that's the only way we're going to solve this problem. Uh, you can't pave these roads with good intentions, and you have to put money into the, 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 the pot to take care of the roads that need attention. Bill, please. All right, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, having me here today to um, speak my views and, and uh, join you guys today. Um, I feel I've done more than anybody that's up here who to help fix our streets. I brought forward the wheel tax that we have in the city of Sheboygan. We collected the money this past year. Um, we can put that money now to use, which, as the mayor stated, that uh, Director Beeble has I do believe it's 10 projects that he stated in the Sheboygan Press that we have planned, plus additional um, funds where he can, you know, go out there and let's fix some of these potholes and let's make a change. Um, we also did vote on, um, you know, extra funds from our strategic planning uh, to put forward towards the streets. I know there was a heavy discussion in our council at that time. Um, some wanted to spend extra money, some didn't want to spend money. Um, I came up with a proposal that was somewhere in the middle, um, you know, a middle ground where we could still get a lot of projects done on streets, um, but still not break the budget and, and, and still put some money towards the streets. Um, some of the people up here I know didn't vote for, you know, streets are an important thing and they say they're an important thing, but yet they didn't vote to put any funds or come forward with any other ideas to uh, get our streets fixed. this event in the Chamber of Commerce. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here and be able to speak in front of everybody. 
Um, regarding the, the streets or the roads, um, in 2016, the following legislation was passed specifically to target the roads. A $20 per vehicle wheel tax, and that equates to $880,000 a year. Uh, the garbage fee was extended. That equals $1.1 million a year in revenue, and that was targeted specifically for roads. The county half cent sales tax that everybody is uh, familiar with, that's $412,000. So that equates to $2.3 million worth of new revenue that is going to be targeted specifically for roads. And we'll continue to borrow, and hopefully we'll borrow at a more responsible level than we did this year uh, for the roads. And we'll continue to have special assessments when uh, possible. And so those are all the funding mechanisms for the road. Um, in Monday evening at the council meeting, we're going to be probably approving a new paving machine for the roads as well. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow Director Beeble to pave more roads with his own staff and do it at a more economical price point than uh, what we've currently been able to do with the, the outdated or the smaller size paver that, that we have. And the, the above mentioned uh, revenue streams that I talked about are over and above uh, the property tax levy, which is already burdensome. So we pay more than enough in taxes and fees and assessments. You know, we do not need to double our debt in order to address this issue. We need to prioritize and fund our priorities at the expense of those items that do not meet the threshold of being a priority. So what I would do is I, I would prioritize a higher volume collector streets uh, or main streets, east and west, north and south, the heavily traveled streets. And I would insist that these streets uh, that, would, that would require attention move up on the priority list, and I'm out of time. Thank you. I also want to thank the Chamber for hosting this today, and I want to thank everybody that has attended today. And for streets, I think that they are getting worse, and I think one reason that we are getting worse streets is that we haven't been paying much attention to them in the last four years. that we do need it. But I would like to see another way or, or two of getting more money for streets. A few years ago, I had asked the city attorney if there was a way that we could impose at that time a half percent gas tax in the city of Sheboygan. And he said, no, it would need a, approval from the state legislature. But I thought if we do it from a gas tax, the people that live outside the city but use our streets would also be paying something for improving our streets. We would also get some money from tourists who come here and don't pay anything for repairing our streets but use them. And I also felt that the people that use the streets more would be paying a little more than a flat wheel fee where everybody pays the same whether they travel 30 miles a day in the city or half a mile once a month. And I'm just about out of time. Thank you. Our next question, what is your plan to draw young business people, skilled workers, and entrepreneurs to the area? How can we keep our talent here and stop the city's brain drain? Questions. The first question is how do we draw new people to our community and I really think that our collaboration with the uh, Sheboygan Economic Development Corporation and the Chamber of Commerce and the Someplace Better campaign is, is really one of the great ways to do that because we sell Sheboygan and the great things that we have in our community that are really attractive for people to, uh, as a place to work. And then we have had over 3,000 jobs available for the entire year, which are, are, are listed on that site. So people can really focus on the job that they want, want to come. And then we try to uh, make Sheboygan better for these new people coming in. We have uh, $37 million worth of construction and residential uh, projects 
that are allowing people to find great uh, market rate apartments soon in our downtown and in other areas of our community. We also have been trying to uh, accent the cultural aspects of Sheboygan and one of the big things that, that we collaborated on with the John Michael Kohler Art Center and the Sheboygan Square Business District is to have the uh, Thursday night 11 a.m. concert series that really is something that uh, brings our community together and really shows uh, what a great place this is. The other part of this is our Red Raider Manufacturing and our Lakeland College Technical Schools where we're trying to teach the students that are growing up here that they can have another pathway by going into some of these technical skills and being able to work in a local factory. The last part of it is trying to get the kids that have left Sheboygan, gone to college, and maybe have had a job for a few years in another community, get them to come back home. Because if we can get them to come back home, uh, they're going to probably stay here for the rest of their life. And I think we need to work with some of the reunion groups and maybe have job fairs over the holidays when these kids are home visiting family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we need to do a great job of selling, selling Sheboygan as a whole. We do. We have the chamber. We have all these other entities that do do a great job. But we got to give them a reason to want to live here. I've had the opportunity to coach kids up at North High School um, a few years back. And now that they've graduated, I ask them, why aren't you coming back to the community? Why don't you come back here? And they say, you've got to give us reasons to come back here. We have a great arts. We have all this. I think we need more retail shopping opportunities. We need more restaurants. Um, they're looking for all these extra things. That's why they're tending to go for it at the bigger city. Um, I, I just think we need to look for those opportunities, make those phone calls, try to get those retail businesses in here. Um, I think we need a revenue for more concerts. The Stephanie Wild Center is beautiful. I go there very often. But I'm talking about if we want to bring in some national um, entertainment. Uh, we don't have that one side is bigger than the Stephanie Wild Center to bring in that type of entertainment. And I really think we need to find a way uh, to build that type of uh, entertainment um, in our city. I think all these things together, and just by selling Sheboygan, uh, we can definitely get these people to come back to Sheboygan. Because we got the jobs here, we got great businesses. They want to work for them, but they want to have a good time when they're away from work too. They like to work hard, and then they like to play hard. So we got to give them both. city. Um, I, I've got young, um, young adults. As it, you know, I had three kids and uh, one came back here and worked. He went to Marquette and Kohler offered a co-op. He worked at Kohler. Um, so I know that you know, employees or employers like Kohler that are offering internships and co-ops. Acuity is currently recruiting a lot of young talent. You know, so there, there are jobs that, as previously mentioned, that are here. There are companies that are doing whatever they can to attract young people. Kohler even uh, recently put an office in Milwaukee because they want to be able to attract young people that want to live in an urban setting. So what we need to do as a city is address the need for housing, which uh, has already been mentioned and we have. Uh, with Oak Brook, we've got another apartment on South A Street that will be breaking ground, Portscape Apartments. You know, so that continues to be... Um, a, a need that needs to be addressed and once we have that then I think organically uh, some of the other needs for a vibrant downtown life um, will, will be met so we also need to have um, a mayor uh, that is going to be engaging uh, the, the local businesses um, American Orthodontics HSA Bank Aurora etc what are their current needs you know what do they anticipate as future needs and we also have to have an open dialogue with uh, employers that are outside the city, Kohler, Sargento, Masters Gallery, Beam, and Sartori. You know, we need to have a positive relationship with these leaders and able to react in a precise manner to address their needs uh, should they have one, such as Masters Gallery, which we lost to the city of Lewisburg. Um, but we need to have somebody that is going to have develop relationships with the business leaders, anticipate and know their needs, and be able to react and, and work with developers to make it happen. I think one reason if we have a lot of the college students not returning, and according to what they've told me, a Sheboygan has such high taxes. I know a lot of kids that have moved back to the area after graduating from 
UW Milwaukee or Madison, and they are picking the town of Wilson to live in, or the city of Sheboygan Falls, or town of Sheboygan, and they all give the same reason. We like this area, but the taxes in Sheboygan are too high. They tell me if I go out to this town of Sheboygan, I don't have to pay the garbage fee, I don't have to pay the wheel tax. So in order to get the people to come here, we have to find a way to reduce the cost of the people that live here. And I'm not seeing that. The taxes keep on going up, and when the taxes can't go up, we start road uh, wheel taxes or garbage fees or something else. So the people notice that, and it turns them off. And as for the apartments downtown, I know one woman that just got a job at Acuity, and she's making a lot of money now, and I asked her, are you going to move to Sheboygan now? She goes, no, because Sheboygan has <coughs> high-priced rents. She goes, I'm still paying off student loans, so I can't afford $800 a month for rent in one of the new apartments. And we have to look at the college students that just graduated and realize they can't always afford $800 a month for an apartment here because they have student loans to pay off. They probably have car loans to pay off. If they have a family, that's expensive. And I have to cut this short because I'm out of time. Question three, what is your stand? <coughs> Excuse me, what is your stand on growing the city and its services to support a healthy economy and to entice more businesses? Alderman. the economy of the city, but I am also concerned that we have to get along with our neighbors. We can't always take property from the town of Sheboygan or town of Wilson or other townships because then we start to get into a battle with whose land is this? And that could very well turn off some businesses that want to come here that don't want to get into an argument of do you want to be in the town of Wilson or city of Sheboygan? they might decide to just skip coming here and going somewhere else. And I think if we do expand, we also have to look at the cost it's going to be to the city. As an example, if the city is now expanding into some property that they just bought in the town of Wilson, and in order to be <coughs> annexed into the city, we have to add water and sewer, and that all costs money, and that's coming right now from the current city taxpayers. I strongly support and encourage economic development. Uh, what I do not support is growing our government or our services. In fact, I'm in favor of outsourcing where it makes sense and turning over functions to the private sector if that is in fact available. Uh, economic development is essential and vital to moving the quality of life in Sheboygan as well as increasing the tax base. We need, we need to have a mayor that has a passion and is engaged with developers and business leaders. We need to be receptive and encouraging and creative when opportunities are presented to us. And we need, also need to have the correct personnel in place to negotiate and deliver a positive message to the developers and business leaders. Uh, we had that with Don Hammond when he was president of the council. He had the professional financial background that was necessary. He was well connected with developers and business leaders in the community. He had the political acumen from years on the council. And most of all, he had the passion for economic development and a true love for the city. Um, he left the council uh, a year ago, and there's been a bit of a vacuum um, as it relates to that. So we need somebody similar with similar talent to keep the momentum moving forward. Uh, quite frankly, the pace of economic development has slowed in the past year compared to what it had been in the previous years before. Um, I see it picking up somewhat again, but um, it, it has somewhat slowed. So we need to have a laser focus on economic development. We need to reach out and be proactive rather than sit back and hope opportunities knock on our city hall's front door. And we need a leader with a vision. I think we all are in agreement that we are, um, we all feel economic development in the city of Sheboygan is very important. Um, 
we need to look at every opportunity that comes towards us, and we also need to have someone who's going to go out there and make that phone call to get that person to want to come to Sheboygan and sell Sheboygan. I've been in retail now for quite a few years. I feel I know what the retail de departments or retail areas are looking for to come to the area um, to develop in the city of Sheboygan, and I want to make those calls and sell Sheboygan on how, how great Sheboygan is. We have great services. And covers the codes and ordinances that must be adhered to. Um, and it's a great program. It's a great starting point. Um, it's educational. Um, anybody that's going to be a new landlord or for existing landlords as well. So there's that program that's in place to, to address that. Um, then, uh, as mentioned previously, code enforcement. Uh, we're adding another code enforcement officer, dividing the city in half. So we should be able to, you know, address uh, twice as many issues as we have in the past, and that's been quite successful. And I would like, like to credit Alderman uh, Susie Holshue for bringing that forward and ensuring that that got funded. So that was a, a great addition as well. Uh, one of the other things that we have is we have quite a few neighborhood associations that have become more prominent and active. Uh, we have several neighborhoods that are wor working towards becoming officially recognized members and Penny Weber is working with these um, neighborhood associations closely to guide them through the process. So the neighborhood associations are made up of concerned neighborhoods in a given geography, and those people, what they want are safe neighborhoods, and they want the properties in their neighborhood to be uh, well kept up. So um, it's these people that are in the neighborhood that are driving this, and, and they're looking out for um, the welfare of the neighborhood. Along with that, we have a police department that has community policing, and part of that is neighborhood officers who specifically target given neighborhoods and, and work with the community so, or with the neighborhood associations as well. So they're able to identify the trouble spots um, and, and work with the, the neighborhoods. Um, as far as the drug problem goes, um, I believe that the chief has a very good handle on it. I'm very impressed with his work. Uh, part of the problem is mental health issues, and Aurora has a great mental health facility, and I know that the police chief is in favor of, you know, keep, keeping that and supporting that as well. For the drug problem, I feel that the police department is doing an excellent job, but the police department also needs the support of every citizen in Sheboygan. If the people see something suspicious, they got to report it to the police. And they also have to realize that the police have to get the evidence so that the district attorney has a good case. They can't expect to report something to the police and see arrest the next day. The people have to be patient and they have to work with the police department. I also think that we have to somehow get the county judges to stop with the slap on the wrists. I see too many people getting convicted of selling drugs, maintaining a drug house, and then their sentence is probation, and they're back on the street selling drugs again. So I think we have to start putting some of these people in jail for a while to get them off the streets to stop selling drugs. As for the slumlords, there's a group on Facebook called Slumlords of Sheboygan. And I had joined that a couple months ago, and I was shocked by some of the pictures that the people posted on that page and what they told me. And in every case, they told me, if I complain to the city, I will get evicted. So we have to find a way to protect the people. And Boston has a program where before a landlord can rent a house, it's got to be inspected by the city, and they get a certificate of rentability. And I asked the city attorney if we could do that here, and he said no. So I've been at least looking into what we can do. What will you do to work cooperatively and collaboratively with other units of city and county government? I would try to meet with all of the other local leadership privately, one-on-one, -on -one, and hopefully also in groups, because the more we can communicate, the better we'll all get along, 
And all of the problems facing Sheboygan are not just Sheboygan's problems, they're everybody's problems around here. If Sheboygan's got a drug problem, that's also going to affect Sheboygan Falls, Kohler, Oostburg. We can't pretend that it just stops at the city limits of Sheboygan. It affects everybody. And all of us in every government body have to work together to solve the problems. If we want more people to come to Sheboygan to work, we have to work with the other communities also so that they have places for these people to live if there's not enough uh, places to live in Sheboygan. And we have to make it so that people can get from these areas to Sheboygan on good roads. Within the city, we need to have strong leadership in the mayor and the chief administrator. Um, department heads need to have well-defined goals and objectives that can be measured. They need to be held accountable. This must be done in a professional, <coughs> transparent manner, and this can be done cooperatively and collaboratively. There's not an issue with that. Uh, the county, on the other hand, that's a whole different animal. Uh, the county's taken advantage of the city and the taxpayers in recent years. The combined dispatch is a great example. We could have achieved the combined dispatch years ago for $430,000 at the still then relatively new police station. All we needed to do was add an additional workstation and run some additional fiber optic. Um, instead, it was just recently completed at the county for $12 million. The city's portion of this fiasco cost the taxpayers $2.5 million. The mayor originally wanted the city to pay $5 million as part of this program. Again, remember, this could have been done for $430,000. In the next sterling example of cooperative government with the county is the half cent sales tax increase for transportation. This was created by the county in a vacuum with no input from the city, yet the city comprises 43% of the county's population. Once alerted of this scheme, the mayor lobbied county boards supervisors telling them that the city supported this great idea. Um, once I became aware of that, I put a resolution forward to oppose the county sales tax and it passed unanimously twice, once at the Committee of the Whole and once uh, in front of the whole council. Uh, it was not a good deal for the taxpayers of the city or the city and the mayor lobbied for it and supported it. I will only work with the county in a collaborative fashion if the interests of the city of Sheboygan are respected and addressed in a positive manner. I will always put the interests of the city of Sheboygan first, and I'm tired of the county using our geography and our taxpayers to waste and redistribute tax dollars without equitable benefit. I would also like to meet with all the areas in the city of Sheboygan, starting with our department heads. Getting to know that the city of Sheboygan is about working with teamwork. It's not all about one person or one, one area. We all need to work together. One thing I learned as my many years is from coaching football, it teaches you a lot more things than just sports. A little bit was the dollars of it. I really wish we could make something like that happen. Um, and that was that first proposal. Then we came back with another second proposal with a little less and stuff. Um, not so much in favor of that one. If we're going to do City Hall, I think we should just do go all the way and make it look like something special for the city of Sheboygan. As far as looking at other, other sites or new sites, I'm always up to listening to those ideas. Obviously, it all comes down to dollars and what makes sense um, for the taxpayers of Sheboygan. If it would come forward that you know a new site would make sense, I would definitely entertain that. But I'm all in favor of making City Hall something important for the city of Sheboygan to make that the structure that people recognize when they come to our city. Thank you. Well, when we started this discussion, I also was in favor of staying in City Hall. But when we got the architect's dollars and we were looking at 11 to $12 million, I just knew that there was no way that we could really fit that into our budget. The $8 million program was still a hard thing to swallow, but then we started talking about the building next door and trying to uh, rearrange that whole block. And when you look at uh, the opportunity to create new tax base uh, in what are now surface parking lots, that added a different dynamic to that particular question and uh, gave us, uh, I think, some, some ways to not only win with a new building, but win with new tax base that we'd be building and opportunity for new businesses to move into our downtown. Now, there, there is an issue with the way the floors were lining up, and uh, 
we, we estimated we'd have to put another floor in that facility to accommodate City Hall. And I'm not sure if we can rearrange that in a different way so it still works. And then we have another uh, opportunity to look at a different building downtown that's uh, still under study. So I think the jury's out on that, uh, but I'm all for trying to create more tax base. And when you look at City Hall, it would cost us that $8 million minimum to really fix it up so we could use it. But yet there's uh, two or three developers that are knocking on our door who would love to get a hold of that building, claim historic tax credits, and put 21 market rate apartments in there. Now they can do that and draw down those other funds where we can't do that. It would all come out of the taxpayer's pocket. And so that may be a better uh, route to go. One thing I want to keep uh, strong in all of this is I don't ever want to see City Hall torn down. We want to have something in that building that's going to continue to have that building in our community. Um, it's something that we, we need to preserve. It is just about one o'clock and starting with the audience questions, we have one write-in question and it's a bit long, so bear with me, please. A few years ago, a small business owner reportedly invested $2 million to renovate their building. Before reopening, a direct competitor wanted to enter the market only three blocks away. The city of Sheboygan provided significant financial assistance to the newcomer because it wanted the additional tax base. The owner of the established business then decided not to reopen. A small business will now wonder if investing in their, in their business in Sheboygan is a good idea when it's possible that after faithfully paying property taxes for years, the city will take action that directly hurts their prospects. Are you aware of the damage this action did to the entrepreneurial environment of Sheboygan? Alderman Field. I'm not aware of the current example that they're giving there, but um, it hurts me to know that uh, somebody wasn't able to reopen based off of something like that. I think we really need to take a look at every situation and, and look at all the avenues that it will affect. Um, I, I feel bad for that business at lost because I don't like to lose any business, especially one that's been established already. We always want to encourage new people to come in, but I think we've got to actually you know, take the time to look at the, the broad picture on how, what it's all going to affect instead of just going, oh, hey, we got new business here, let's just quick get them in. We've got to really take the time to look at the whole thing. Many of these business development loans are made through our Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority. And when somebody proposes uh, a project and asks for some funding to, uh, it's basically uh, set for job creation, um, you know, we evaluate that proposal, we go through the finances of it, and we present that to the Redevelopment Authority, and, and they make the decision. Now, many times, some of our local merchants may not come and ask for that money. Many times the, we see people coming from the outside are more apt to do that because they're bringing a business to the area and they, they're looking for some assistance. But we have uh, no really uh, pre preferences whether it comes from a local business or whether it comes from a business that's coming from the outside. And it's just a matter of their particular situation. <coughs> we try to fill a gap with most of the funding. So many times there's an opportunity for a business to come in but the bank is only willing to borrow them so much money. And so the redevelopment authority will take a second position behind the bank, fill that gap so that they can put their project together, and then things can go forward. Right now in, in the uh, hall today, we have Brian Berner, who's opening up a new restaurant downtown Sheboygan. He approached the redevelopment authority and also was able to secure a business development loan. And we're very happy to fund local interest. Brian's been in the community for quite a while, and we're happy to see that he's opening up the Harvest Cafe soon. Um, I'm not familiar with the specific instance that's being referred to in that question either. Uh, I do sit on the plan commission uh, where new businesses come before and uh, their plans are brought forward and, uh, is, and they're debated and you know, they're given granted approval. And I don't recall anything like this. I don't recall there ever being an issue. I've been on that commission for over two years. And um, we invite neighbors, um, competitor, you know, anybody can come into that. If, there, if this person had a concern with this business being opened up, could have come before the plan commission and voice his concern before things move forward. So um, I, I guess I would just like to throw that out there for the person that, that put that question through in the future that 
should some a similar situation arise that he could certainly address it at the plan commission so in again i share the same sentiments that uh alderman thiel has that you know nobody wants to discourage or um you know eliminate any business opportunity from from uh becoming um a successful uh in growing thriving business we're all looking for development and uh that's what we're what we want and without any further specifics regarding this i guess i can't comment any more on it i have also heard from a few friends of mine who are small business owners in sheboygan and they have complained to me on numerous occasions that when they go to this and so it makes sense for them to take advantage of this opportunity and uh, build up their athletic uh, opportunities by improving the fields and uh, we hope we can uh, can get this done sometime this later this year hasn't even been proposed yet so um i'm gonna side with with alderman thiel and there hasn't been anything that's been presented yet so i can't say whether i support anything or not you know because i don't know what what it is um so in the past the past proposal i supported um I, i've got a very unique um relationship with with this whole project in that uh, my wife works for saint nicholas She's in charge of uh, uh, surgical services for both of their surgery center and the hospital. Uh, I've got a, a family member who originally was an original investor for the surgery center there. Uh, I get the economics. I know exactly what Aurora wants to do and why they want to do it. You know, I understand that. Is the community, is Sheboygan better off with Aurora in the city limits? Absolutely. I mentioned before that the mental health services that they provide is an outstanding asset to the community. So. I'm, I'm in favor of them being in the city. I cannot say that I support a, 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 a proposal that hasn't been made public yet. I have no idea, you know, what it's going to be. I also happen to resent, represent the far northeast side of Sheboygan. I live two blocks away from the existing hospital. So I'm very, very concerned what's going to happen with that property, how it's going to be addressed, what future use. Um, is it going to be torn down? How quickly it can be torn down? Uh, what effect it's going to have on on the neighborhood and the values that, that that's going to you know transpire in years to come so um again without having something you know formally you know i, I can't support it um i will again look at it with like alderman bill Thiel and uh, when it comes before us and uh, i will make my uh, decision at that point in time i am all in favor of aurora building a new hospital in sheboygan but not on the Field of Dreams. And I have maintained that position since the Save the Field of Dreams group started. I have been speaking up for saving the Field of Dreams for two years. Aurora has a great chunk of land on Wheaton Creek Road that they bought years ago to build a new hospital. Now they tell me that there's all sorts of problems. And at the open house that Aurora had a couple weeks ago, I asked why they bought that land if it wasn't good for a hospital. The answer I got from the five people that I asked was, I wasn't working for Aurora two years ago, so I can't answer that. And they, when they said they would get somebody that could answer, they never came back to talk to me and answer my questions. And Aurora says that it's for the best future of Sheboygan. Yet if you look at the future of Sheboygan, the southern part of Sheboygan is the fastest growing part of Sheboygan, along with the area of Gooseburg and Cedar Grove. So a new hospital on the south side of Sheboygan would better serve the needs of the future of the medical services in Sheboygan. Also, if you look at or listen to the people that say the Field of Dreams is not in good shape right now for the fields, that's because there has not been any maintenance done on the fields. If you build new fields and don't do any maintenance, you're going to have the same problem as at the current Field of Dreams, that there's no maintenance on it. So maintenance has to be done. And who's going to be doing the maintenance on the new fields? Not the school district. And the mayor said that the Field of Dreams is not a park. 
If you go in the mayor's office right now, you can pick up a map of the city of Sheboygan, which shows the Field of Dreams, and it's listed as a park. at the Aurora Hospital. Alderman Lomonoski? Well, if Aurora builds in Sheboygan, no matter where they build, they're going to create new jobs. Right now, their sole purpose of wanting to be next to St. Nicholas, <coughs> which they don't want to admit, is to take patients away from St. Nicholas and in the long term, put St. Nicholas out of business. That has been their goal in other cities where they have built right next to an existing hospital is to put that hospital out of business. And what happens is, in reality, it raises patient costs for patients in both hospitals. And I'm all in favor of Aurora building a new hospital in the city of Sheboygan, but not on the field of dreams. The new jobs will come wherever they build it in Sheboygan. The jobs are not going to not come to this area if Aurora builds doesn't build on the field of dreams. And people that would look at this with a reasonable mind would realize that. But a lot of the Aurora people are brainwashed. And even at some of the common council meetings, a lot of rep Aurora people were there speaking in favor of a new hospital. And one night after a meeting, I was in the lobby of City Hall, and I said to one of the Aurora people about how many that they had a space to late. She was, I don't care. I'm getting paid to speak up for Aurora. So Aurora was paying people to speak up. And in the meantime, the Common Council was ignoring the people from the Field of Dreams who lived in the area. How many people here would like to live next door to a new Aurora hospital when this flight for life helicopter lands. Uh, I would like to give you know, They're gonna not only shop at those places, but they're gonna shop at our smaller businesses also. Um, competition is good. Um, I work for, you know, obviously one of the biggest retailers and we don't have a problem with Meyer coming to Sheboygan. We know the competition is gonna be good. It's just gonna make us better and it should make us better. And I feel just by bringing those retail places into the city of Sheboygan, and, and getting a mall type atmosphere again. I, I think like an outlet mall in Sheboygan, if we could find a place to build that in, in the city, would be excellent. And I definitely want to push to try to bring that. The, uh, the old mall is, is pretty much gone. Pretty soon we're gonna tear it down, or Meyer Foods is gonna tear it down, and they'll be in, a, in hopefully 2018 building their new store here. So, you know, what do we do about the leakage that Bill mentioned, the people that are going out of town to buy many of these, these goods and services and clothing? Well, again, we partnered with our Sheboygan Economic Development Corporation, and they hired the retail coach. They did a study of all the leakage so that they can detail what it is and share that information with some of the, the businesses and developers that are out there. And Sheboygan, unfortunately, doesn't have a lot of land where these stores want to operate. They want to be right next to the I-43. They don't want to be in downtown Sheboygan. We have a different plan there for the more boutique type businesses uh, that we're trying to draw to downtown Sheboygan. Like uh, there's a, a, a lost uh, sheep yarn shop that just opened up the other day. Um, but the type of businesses that you're talking about are probably going to end up in the town of Sheboygan, north of town. Uh, they've identified some land on, on the uh, behind the Culver's area there, and they're, they're looking to try to put a plan together uh, with a developer to develop another shopping area out there, and that's probably going to be where those will end up in the future. Yeah, again, 
to reiterate what has already been said, you know, that the mayor is, is doing what they're going to do with the property that they acquired. And um, it's unfortunate with Hobby Lobby and some of the other retailers that, we, that we've lost. Uh, but hopefully, um, through Chad's efforts and uh, Daryl's efforts, uh, you know, that we may be able to find some other location that would be suitable for uh, a place like Hobby Lobby or other retailers as well. Um, the, the dynamics of, of large shopping malls in the city of our size, um, you know, I think are, you know, they're, they're not sustainable anymore with the, all the online and, and things that are going on. And remember that we're, you know, landlocked to the east. We've got a big lake there. So with our, our population density doesn't support a Gap or, uh, you know, a Nordstrom's or, or anything like that. Or, you know, in as much as, you know, I would like to see that right here in our own backyard. And, and again, what the mayor stated, um, the, the interstate corridor, the land that the city owns, and it's very limited, and, and these uh, retailers want to have very specific, you know, um, they want to be right off the interstate. I mean, if you look at the corridor down in Grafton where Daryl came from, you know, how that all developed, and um, that, that's a, the perfect scenario for, you know, someone that's got land that's ava available that's, you know, right next to the interstate. So, unfortunately, we've got, you know, land issues, and uh, we've got issues with technology as well, with online that are working against us. I'm also sorry to see them all go, and I know we're going to lose a few more stores that are left out there because none of them are going to renew their lease knowing that the mall is going to get torn down. And I would like to see more stores around here also, but I know that the stores want a certain size population that they can draw from in the immediate area. And as John said, we cannot draw any customers from Lake Michigan. And to the south, we're actually too close to Port Washington. To the north, we're actually too close to Manitowoc. And to the west, we're actually too close to Fond du Lac. So when they draw a circle from those cities, they see that part of that area would also cover Sheboygan's area. So why should they really build a new store in Sheboygan for a very limited number of customers. It's just sad, but it's the way the truth is about where Sheboygan is located.